Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Gardner, and today I'm going to do a little video about how to tell the difference between the horn pseudocysts of seborrheic keratosis and keratin pearls, which are seen in squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, sometimes people, uh, particularly beginners in pathology, get these uh, confused because uh, they're both swirly little whorls of acellular keratin, but they have some differences. So here's a seborrheic keratosis, and I've got a video about seborrheic keratosis and another video about squamous cell carcinoma, um, which will have a lot more details. I'll put that in the video description. SEBS, uh, it's an acanthotic lesion uh, made of keratinocytes. It tends to have a flat uh, uh, border, and it's pushed up above the epidermis. See, there's the, the adjacent epidermis over, uh, find my arrow here. I guess I should have prepared that ahead of time. Oh, there it is. See, there's the adjacent epidermis over there, so it kind of sits up above it. And here, if we go to the other side, here's the epidermis over there. And then inside of it, all of these round circles, these are horn pseudocysts. Let's go closer and look at them. Horn pseudocysts are within the seborrheic keratosis, which means they're usually sitting within the epidermis, basically. Uh, occasionally, that can be hard to tell because seborrheic keratosis can be so thick that it can sometimes be hard to tell if it's in the epidermis or not. They, uh, the other thing that really helps is they're made usually of swirly, loose, flaky keratin like this. See how loose and delicate the keratin is there? And it usually is orthokeratin. That means it lacks nuclei. It doesn't have retained nuclei like parakeratosis would. And I'll show you the contrast um, in a minute when we look at keratin pearls. Okay, and look down here. The reason we call them horn, pseudocysts horn, is um, a, a word that refers to the stratum corneum or the dead keratin that's on the skin surface. This is the, the stratum corneum and that's the horn of the skin. Some people use horn as an analogous word for this and that's because horns like in rhinos and other animals are made of keratin just like our nails and our hair and also the surface of our skin. So these are made of horn, they're made of dead keratin and the reason we call them pseudocysts is because they're not real cysts, they actually open up to the surface of the skin, okay? So it's just a matter of sectioning. When we cut the slide microscopically, are we cutting through the area where the cyst opens up to the surface? If we can see the whole opening like this, sometimes you see that, but other times you've cut it a little bit off to one side or the other and you can't see where it opens up. So that's why we call them horn pseudocysts. Now in contrast, Here's a squamous cell carcinoma, and you can see it's invading down into the dermis. There's the epidermis up here. The squamous is invading down. It's got a big cystic area full of keratin in the middle. Let me get the lighting and the color right. This one's a little bit pink. All right. So you can see, though, here's an example of a keratin pearl. And the keratin pearl is, um, is made of dense pink keratin, and that keratin is sitting in the middle of an island of atypical keratinocytes that's down in the dermis. And there's a lot of nuclei in there, see? So it's like parakeratosis, like you'd see parakeratosis on the surface of the skin. The idea is that these keratinocytes, they're making parakeratosis that gets trapped inside the nests of tumor. And those little swirled, entrapped aggregates of parakeratosis are what we call keratin pearls, okay? So a couple clues to keratin pearls are finding the nuclei in there. The keratin's usually dense and a lot more packed together. Also, usually it's gonna be a nest in the dermis. And the other thing is that we're going to usually see, not always, because sometimes squames can be kind of bland, but usually we're gonna see mitosis, atypia, stuff like that around, around um, the lesion, okay? Like down here, we got atypical keratinocytes down here, okay? So that, in contrast, that's a keratin pearl. And sometimes when they're just starting out, they look kind of like this. See, that is just the very beginning of a, of a keratin pearl. It's starting to swirl around there. Let's see if this condenser will get the color better. I don't know why. I have trouble with the color sometimes. Okay, there we go. That's just the very beginning of a little keratin pearl there in this squamous cell carcinoma. Let's look at a few more examples. Here's another nice seborrheic keratosis. This one has just tons of, uh, of horn pseudocysts. And again, you can see how nicely um, many of them, 
with the right angle of cutting, you can tell that they open up to the surface, like right there. Look how loose and flaky that keratin is inside of them. And sometimes, I think this one had one, I should have put a dot on it, ah, uh, there. Sometimes they do this really cool thing where they look like a little star or like a spider web. They're quite beautiful. Cerebrate keratoses, most people consider to be pretty unsightly when it's growing on their skin. Uh, but under the microscope, they're actually uh, very pretty uh, lesions to look at because the keratin just is so brilliant in its color. So those little spider web looking ones, it's a perfect you know decoration for Halloween or something. So there's your horn pseudocyst again. I'll go to very low power. This is another seborrheic keratosis. And look, it's really thick, but if you look again at the edges, there's the, there's the epidermis at this edge. Go all the way over to the other edge. Even though it's kind of convoluted, there's the epidermis again over here. This whole thing is pretty much sitting up above the epidermis. That's why seborrheic keratosis have the stuck on appearance clinically. They look like they're like a piece of chewing gum or something that got squished onto the skin and it's sitting up above the adjacent skin usually, okay? Uh, the reason I'm gonna show you this one <clears throat> is that every once in a while there's exceptions to every rule. And look, this is a horn pseudocyst, but it's got parakeratin in it. It's got nuclei, and I told you that it doesn't usually do that. Well, sometimes it does, okay? So that's, I'll flip the condenser there. So that's the some parakeratosis, which you can see, particularly in irritated or inflamed seborrheic keratoses, they can begin to get a lot of parakeratosis, and they can also have atypia and mitoses, and sometimes that can be actually pretty tricky to tell apart from squamous cell carcinoma. We'll have to make that the topic of another video. Um, it's something I still struggle with sometimes, even uh, to this day. And this one doesn't show anything special, except that it's just the biggest, most awesome example of seborrheic keratosis ever. Look at that. This is a 2x objective, so uh, a 2x uh, lens on my microscope. I still can barely fit this thing in here. It's such a huge seb, and you can see the normal skin would have been like down here. It's like sitting on a stalk and it's protruding up above the skin surface. And look at those horn pseudocysts, wow. If you don't like that, then I don't know what to do to help you, because that's just so cool, right? You can take a simple basic lesion and you can still find interesting stuff about it. And that is the joy of being a pathologist. You get to help people while looking at stuff under the microscope. That's interesting. All right, let's look at some other examples of, of carrots and pearls. Here's a squame, squamous cell carcinoma. You can see it's invading and pushing down compared to the normal epidermis adjacent to it. It's pushing way down and invading into the dermis. All the little swirls that we see here, these are keratin pearls. So again, they're in the dermis in this case. They tend to be composed of more dense keratin. They have nucleoli. And you can see, look, there's not any keratin really in the middle here except maybe a tiny little smidgen of it. But these swirling keratinocytes are starting to kind of produce, you can tell that they almost want to make this structure right here. So even finding this kind of swirled glassy, we call that glassy, my squamous cell carcinoma video talks more about that. I think um, you can find that sometimes, and when you see that in a tumor, you can think of a, a squamous cell carcinoma, even if it doesn't have well-formed keratin pearls, because not every seb has horn pseudocysts, and not every squamous cell carcinoma has keratin pearls. And the other thing is sometimes you see individual, individual highly keratinized cells. Like right there, see all the dense keratin in that cytoplasm? So it's not really a pearl, but again, it's evidence that the tumor is made of cells that are producing keratin. And when we see that in a malignant tumor, that's evidence that we're dealing probably with squamous cell carcinoma. And of course, there are lots of exceptions that are more complicated than we're talking about here. And very atypical uh, keratinocytes to the side. Here is a squamous cell carcinoma that's got a horn on top of it, and I've got a video about what cutaneous horns are, and when you see them, I'll put a link to that down below. This is one that is a little hard to tell because it looks like almost the whole tumor is actually up above the epidermis. So sometimes squames can do this, they can push up too, like a seb would do. <clears throat> but when you look closer at the area here, it's not a nice smooth border like a seb would have, but instead it's lots of individual islands that are invading down into the dermis. Even though it's sitting up high in the skin, there still are little islands of invasion here. And again, they have that very nice swirly look. And parakeratosis is a dense keratin. Sometimes flipping your condenser back and forth on your microscope can give you a better view of the individual little cracks between the swirls. 
And sometimes uh, the center will fall out during cutting and it'll give you like a, a central cystic space, a hole that makes it look kind of uh, more loose like that. See, so sometimes horns, I'm sorry, sometimes uh, carrots and pearls can kind of uh, start looking a little more loose like you would see in a um, horn pseudocyst. So again, it's not always perfectly uh, clear cut, but I think most of the time you can sort them out with a little uh, practice. And I think I've got one or two other examples here while we're doing it. I was going to make a five minute video, but now it's 10 minutes. But those of you who watch my channel know that this is how things usually go. Um, here we go. More horn pseudocyst there. I'm sorry. <laughs> more, that's a carrots and pearl. More carrots and pearl right there. Parakeratosis, dense and swirly. Atypical keratinocytes adjacent to it. There's another one right there. And then one last example. And this one just because the uh, carrots and pearls are so very, very swirly and big. Look at that. It's like a spiral. It's amazing. So I hope this helps you um, to visualize the differences between the horn pseudocysts of seborrheic keratosis and the keratin pearls of squamous cell carcinoma. A lot of people talk about these terms and I think now you've got hopefully a good uh, basis for being able to tell them apart when you're looking in the microscope. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please click like and if you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. And of course, if you haven't yet, I'd appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you very much. Have a great day.